Welcome to another episode of RC Glider Basics on the Armsword YouTube channel. I'm Thomas and today we're going to talk a little bit about ballast. So you may have heard of the term ballast and maybe you have an idea of what ballast is, but maybe you're not very clear what it does. So like the other videos in our RC Gliders Basics series, we're here to help explain some of the what's and why's. What is ballast? What does it do? Why do we use it? What is it made of? And what does it look like? As usual, if you enjoyed the video, please give it a thumbs up. And if you haven't subscribed yet, please hit the subscribe button and bell icon so you don't miss our future videos. If you have any questions or suggestions, make sure to leave a comment down below. All of this really helps our channel grow so we can continue making content like this for you and others who are interested in RC gliders. This video and ballast, it really applies to pretty much any high performance RC glider, whether it's a discus launch glider like the Deviant over here, or a F5K electric glider like the Fury behind me, or a four meter F5J electric glider. In this video, my examples will be with DLGs. Just know that the principle applies to the others as well. So what is ballast in a glider? As the name implies, ballast is something you add to the inside of your glider to increase its all up weight or flying weight. It's important to put the ballast inside the glider and not the outside, otherwise it might fall off mid spin during your launch and either damage your model or worse, hit someone and injure them. Now you might be thinking, hey Thomas, I thought discus launch gliders and other thermal gliders should be as light as possible so they can climb in thermals or rising bits of warm air. This is a gross oversimplification, but that's true. All things being equal and to a certain degree, the lighter the glider, the better it's gonna float and the better it's gonna climb and lift. So why do we use ballast? Well, when your glider is so light and floaty, it flies like a dream when the air is calm, but as soon as the wind starts to blow, you'll start having a hard time getting your light, floaty glider to penetrate through the wind. When there's wind, the thermals are gonna usually start moving downwind with the prevailing wind. And your plane is gonna move further and further downwind as long as you wanna stay in that lift and continue climbing. So if your glider is too light for the wind, you're not gonna be able to get the glider back to you. And sometimes you might not even get the glider back to the flying field. To solve that, we ballast our gliders. So ballasting up a glider makes it heavier, which increases the flying speed and momentum. And in some places, it improves the glide ratio, which is the amount of ground that it can cover for any given drop in height. All of which really helps the glider's ability to penetrate through the wind. So now when you follow the lift downwind, your ballasted model can still come back to the field or at least have a higher success rate of doing so. The second reason of using ballast is to help calm down the model. Now smooth, constant wind is easy to fly in, even if it's blowing pretty hard. It only gets tough when air becomes gusty or turbulent. This is especially noticeable if you're flying in your local park where you might have buildings or tree lines along the park, uh, like where I normally fly. The air becomes choppy and a light model just gets tossed around badly. Since ballast adds momentum and mass to the glider, it really calms down the model, making it much more controllable and increases your chances of successfully catching thermals because you're not gonna be thrown around as much. Now we're not gonna go into too much detail in how ballast is used in this basics video. We'll take a deeper dive on the nuances and finesse of ballast use later on. But a very basic and simple take for myself is, I don't use ballast when it's calm or even moderately windy. But once the air becomes turbulent or simply too windy, then I'll use enough ballast to calm down the model. Or if the lift is simply very strong, then I'll put some ballast in there as well since it'll climb quickly and strong lift regardless of a little extra weight, uh, but it does give the model a bit more energy to move around the sky. That ability to move around the sky really helps increase your chances of hitting good air. Or if you're in crap air and someone else is in good air, it gives you a higher chance of being able to quickly fly to that lift and make your time. It's a fine line between not having enough ballast to calm down the model and having too much ballast that it won't climb in the lift available. And that is what makes ballasting very difficult to master. Ballasting is one of those things where you'll really need to go out and fly and experiment in different conditions with different weights to really get a personal feel for. Everyone ballasts differently and every plane ballasts differently. So it's an ever learning experience. 
It's the dark arts of thermal gliding, and it's not easy. But you know what's easy? Shopping for DLG goodies on Armsor. Visit armsor.com whether you're looking for servos, servo frames, glider kits, receiver-ready gliders, parts, we've got you covered. Or if you're in Canada or the US and need KST servos, servo frames, CA needles, aluminum screws, and other accessories quickly, visit armsorusa.com today for fast shipping out of California and free shipping all over the US for orders over 50 US dollars. So what is ballast usually made of? Most of the ballast sticks used is made out of lead. Since it's relatively cheap, you can buy it anywhere and it's heavy. But you need to handle it with care since, well, it's lead. Some people use brass instead, which is also cheap to get without the health concerns of lead. But the lower density means your weight will be more spread out along the fuselage, which is not ideal if you need to add a lot of weight. If you need a lot of weight, then you'll probably use tungsten, which is higher density than lead, but it is very expensive and sometimes it's quite hard to source. In terms of installing ballast, in the past, some of the models had little ballast trays underneath the wing saddle, but they haven't been used much in the last several years as it's too time consuming to change the weight of your ballast during a contest. You would have to unscrew the wing from the fuselage, disconnect the wiring for the wing servos, add or take away ballast, reconnect the wing servos and screw the wing back on. With that in mind, many models such as my Deviant here, we use a lollipop style ballast stick. Essentially, it's a thick wire with one or more pieces of fishing weight on one end and a hook of some sort on the other end that connects to the fuselage or servo tray. This is cheap and easy to make. You can buy everything you need locally and easily and it will essentially work in most models. The main drawback with a basic lollipop style ballast stick is that it's free to move around inside the fuselage and the knocking sound can be a little bit distracting when you're trying to launch the model. Because of that, some of the current higher end models will include a ballast tube inside the fuselage, such as this Banff 2 that we produce. The ballast stick fits snugly inside the tube and doesn't move or produce any sound. This helps give a more solid feel on launch. When you're making your own ballast set, one thing to keep in mind is to keep the mass as centered as possible along the stick so that the mass is very close to the center of gravity, or CG. If the weight is spread out too far from the CG, it will make the model feel dead and dull. Whereas if you keep it centered, it will retain much of the good handling that you need to turn tightly or to feel small indications of lift while flying through the air. Speaking of CG, when adding ballast to your glider, there are two main schools of thought. Some pilots have their model set up so that ballast doesn't change the CG of their model as they want to retain as much of the same handling characteristics as possible, while others like their CG to move forward slightly when ballast is used to make the glider more stable. I am part of the second camp. I feel that when I ballast my models, one of my primary goals is to increase the stability of the model. So in conjunction of increasing the flying weight, Moving my CG forward 0.5 to 1 millimeter really helps increase the stability of my glider. So that covers the basics of ballast, but ballast is going to be a recurring topic in many videos to come. Everyone uses ballast slightly differently, and in some of our upcoming videos, we're going to be talking to some of the best DLG pilots in the world to see how they approach ballasting their gliders. Remember to hit the subscribe button so you don't miss those videos. They're going to be awesome. That's it for today. I hope you learned something and we'll see you in the next video.